Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here. The official guide to the GRE. The third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 92. Day day 3092 3 is to signify that we are in the third edition third edition day 92 and we are on page number 300 actually not 299 on page 300 which is where we discussed which is where the topic of Venn diagram is discussed Venn diagram yesterday we began this series on Venn diagram day, day 91 and I told you yesterday that uh, next five videos 91, 92, 93, 94 and 95 We'll deal with Venn diagrams uh, and set theory. We did two problems yesterday, then problem number one and two. We'll do two more today, problem number three. As you can see, the problem is already on the blackboard. We are told that we have 90 applicants for a job. There is a job opening and 90 people have applied. Of those 90 people who have applied for the job, we are told that 42 have some kind of experience before. 54 also indicate that they have college degrees, they graduated, of uh, they graduated from college, they have some sort of a college degree. Nine of them have neither. The question simply is how many of them have both college, experience, college degree and some job experience? How many, of them only have, how many of them have only experience and how many of them only have only degrees? So let's take a look at it. The very first thing we want to do is draw a universal, universal set. Universal set means it includes everybody. Everybody, including the people who have neither degree nor experience. So first, the two, two sets, there is set number one, set number two, let's indicate the job experience here and the degree here. Now first thing we have to understand here is that, okay, nine of them have neither, 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 neither experience nor college degree. This set here will, ex will indicate the number of people who have experience. That set over there will experience people who have degrees and of course the, the part that where, they inter where they overlap, they intersect, thus those are the people who will have both degree and, a, and an experience. What about the people who have neither? There are nine such people. There are nine such people. People who have neither will go there. These are the people who have neither of these characteristics that have been uh, shown here. That's right, that's nine. Let's, think, let's see what happens. When we add up these two figures, when we add up the figures of people who have experience and people who have college degrees, we get a 6. We get a, I get 106. Did I make a mistake? That should have been 9. 4 plus 5 is 9. 4 plus 5 is 9, or at least it was 9 the last time I checked. 96. 96. And 9 of them, we are told, have, have, have neither, neither college degree nor experience, which means that altogether there are 90 applicants total. Nine have neither, nine have neither, which means 81, 81 people have either, either degree or experience or perhaps even both, only 81. But when we add up these two figures, we get 96. What's going on here? These 81 people have either experience or degree or both, the difference is 15. Where is this 15 coming from? This 15 tells us that we are counting these 15 twice. We, count, we are double counting these 15 people. We are counting these 15 people first as people who have college degrees and then we are counting the same people again, same 15 people again as people who have job experience because they possess both of, character, both of those characteristics. They are here. 15. So we started out with we started out with 42 people having experience and 54 people having college degrees. We just found out that of those 42 people, 15 of them actually also have degrees. And 54 people have degrees and of those 54 people, 15 of them have experience. These 15 are being double counted. As soon as we put a 15 there, we have to take away 15 from here. So we get a 9, 4, four minus 1 is 3, and we get 12, 7. 3 minus 1 is 2. I hope I didn't make a mistake. There you go. There is, our, there is our answer. So, how many of them possess both of these characteristics? The answer is 15. Answer is 15. 
How many of them only job experience? Only job experience? 27 people. And how many of them have only degrees? 39 people. And how many of have neither? Which was given to us, it's not something we figured it out, but it was given to us that there are nine such people. And we add them up, these four figures better add up to a total of 90. And if, if they do not add up to 90, then something has gone wrong. 9 plus 9 is 18, 18, and uh, it's not adding up, it's just, oh, it, it is, 5 plus 7 is 12, 12 plus 18, 12 plus 18 will be 30. That's 0, carry 3, 3 plus 3 plus 3, you see this is 3, 3 and 3, 9, voila. There is your answer. You understand? Let's do one more, very simple, very similar. Question number 4. Question number four that we are about to do. I would like you to compare this question. This number number four that we are about to do. Compare compare this question, this problem. Two example 4.6.3 on page 319 and once we finish doing this problem that we're about to do number four try the one that you see on page 319 and see if you can tackle it yourself so here's what we have and this time we're going to go a little faster they're not that complicated we're told that we did a total of survey of 250 students total of 250 students were surveyed that's what we're told of those 250 people who were surveyed, not students, 250 people were surveyed, 190 told us that they have been to China. 150 told us that they have been to India. 100 told us that they have been to, they have been to both of those countries. Here's the question. It says, if we were to pick one person at random and it, in the exam it will go on to say that from, from among these 250 people who are surveyed, not just anybody, I'm not going to put all of that down. So if you were to, if you were to pick one person at random among the from these 20, 250 people that we surveyed, what are the odds? What are the odds that he or she has been to China but not India? Number two, India, but not China. Number three, what are the odds that he's been to at least one of, at least one of these two countries? He's been to at least one of these two countries. And finally, what are the odds that if you were to pick one person at random from among these 250 people who were surveyed, what are the odds that that person has been to neither, neither India nor China? It's very simple, very straightforward, so we're going to get going. First thing first, we have to put our universal set. Now, we do not know how many people have been to neither, so we cannot put here what goes here, because in these two sets, right here, set A and set B, let's call them uh, India, well, let's call them, let's, let's stick with what I have in my notes here so I don't get confused. Let's call them China and India, 
set that represents the people who have been to China and a set that represents people who have been to India. And people who have not been to neither of these two countries will go in this corner, which is what is being asked here. Since we don't have the figure, we cannot put it here. Once we find out, we'll put it here. So let's get going. So 250 total people were surveyed. We know that it cannot exceed more than 250. We also know that 190 tell us, tell, tell us that they have been to China. 150 tell us that they have been to India. But then they go on to tell us that 100 people have been to both of these countries. Well, if 100 people have been both of these countries, then what is what is going on here is that what is what is going on here is that if I don't find this cap, it's going to get dry. I don't know what I do with these bloody things. What's going on here is that these 100 people who have been to both, when 190 people tell us that they've been to China, in this 190 are these 100 people who have also been to India. And similarly, when we ask 100, when 150 people they tell us that they've been to China, in those in those uh, in that figure of 150 includes the 100 people who have also been to China. They're being double counted. They're being double counted. This 100 people are counted first as the people who have been to China, and the same 100 people are being counted as people who have been to India. We cannot double count. So as soon as we put a 100 here, we need to take away 100 from here, we get a 50 here, we have to take away 100 from here, it becomes, it becomes 90. And now we can figure out how many people have been to neither of these two countries by adding up these three figures. So we add up, we add up 90, 100, and a 50, well, if, if that had been 100, then 100 plus 100 plus 50 would have been exactly 250, so this is going to be 240. What does it tell us? Since, since 200, this 240 represents the number of people. Out of 250 people that we surveyed, it turned out that 240 of them have been to either China or India or perhaps both of them. Do you understand? But we had a total of 250. Well, there you go. The remaining 10 people have been to neither have been to neither. There is the answer to the first question. So the question here is not ask how many people. The question is not phrased in those terms as to absolute numbers, how many people. The question is what are the odds that if you were to pick one peop one person out of this 250 that he will tell you that he or she will tell you that he has been to neither China nor India. The answer is the odds are the odds are 10 out of 250. Because there are 10 such 10 such people out of 250 we have to find the percentage this Let's divide top and bottom by 10, it's 1 out of 25, and now let's multiply top and bottom by 4. If you multiply top and bottom by 4, we end up with 4 over 100, but oh, there you go, it's 4%. There you go. We did it. It's done. Once we have that answer, 4% of the people have been to neither of these countries, then that in itself implies that if 4% of the 250 people who were surveyed tell you that they have been to neither China nor India, then the remaining 96% must have been to at least one of these two countries or both. Which is what this question is asking. It says, what are the odds that if you were to pick one person at random, that that person has been to at least one of these two countries? Well, 4% have been to neither, 96% must have been to both. There you go. And if you were to actually do out the work, which we don't have to, but if you were to do it out, we can do it out. The answer is right here. Let's do it out on the top if you like, and you will see that, oh, it's right here, actually, we just did it. It was 240. But let's, let's do it here from the Venn diagram. If, if, if 10 people have been to neither, 240 must have been to either India or China or both, which is right here. 90 people, 90 people are the people who tell you that they've been to only to China. 50 people tell us that they've been to only India. And 150 pe or 100 people rather tell us that they've been to both. And when we add up these figures, they better add up to 240, and which they do. 90 plus 50 is 140, so it's 240. And 240, 240, divided by 250 because there are a total of 250 so the odds of picking a person who has been to at least one of these two countries is 240 out of 250 let's divide top and bottom by 10 as before we get 24 over 25 and now since we want the percent since we want it in percentage because they're asking what are the odds in percentages 
So let's multiply top and bottom by 4 so we get 100 at the bottom. And 94 times 4 is 96 over 100, which is 96%. But all of that was unnecessary. All of that was unnecessary. This work that we just did, all of this work is unnecessary. Because as soon as we find out that 4% of the people have been to neither, then the converse must also be true that 96% must have been to at least one of these two countries or both. Let's answer the remaining two questions. What are the odds of picking a person who has been to China but not India? Well, China but not India. China is 90. So, what are the odds of picking a China but not India? Number one, China but, but not India. Who has been to China but not India? There are 90 such people. 90 people out of 250 divide up and bottom by 10 and multiply top and bottom by 4 again just like before. 9 times 4 is 36 over 100. The odds are 36%. There is a 36% chance that if you were to pick somebody at random, that person would tell us that I have been to China but not to India. No. Do you understand? Let's do number 2. How many have been to only... What are the odds of picking a person who has been to only India? What are the odds of picking a person at random among these 250 people? of picking a person who has been to India but not to China. Well, there were 50 such people. Oh, this is very easy. 50 out of 250. 50 out of total of 250. Let's do it right here. 50 out of total of 250, the odds of picking such a person is just 5 out of 25 is 20%. So one more time, what are the odds of picking a person who has been only to China? The answer is 36%. What are the odds of picking a person who has been to only India? The answer is 20%. What are the odds of picking a person who has been to both places, which they will not ask because they are telling us in the problem itself this was 100, but if, if they did ask us, it's 100 out of 250. 1 out of 25 is 4%. Now what are the odds of picking a person who has been to neither India nor China? The answer is, there are 10 such people out of 250. It's a 4% chance. Highly unlikely. Very very rare occurrence, only four people out of hundred will tell you. Nope, I have not been to either of those two countries. Tomorrow we'll do two more problems, but tomorrow that's the Venn diagram we'll do, we'll have a little twist to it. They will not ask for the absolute number or pro exact probability as to how many or what are the odds. The question will phrase, they will tell you, for example here they tell us that uh, 100 people have been to both, they might ask us, they might tell us that at least 100 have been to both or at least 100 uh, have, uh, have been to one country. Instead of telling us that, for example, instead of telling us that 40 people have been, are studying algebra, they will not say 40 people are studying algebra, they will tell you that at least 40 are studying algebra. So there's a Venn diagram where you have to do at least and at most. We'll do two such problems tomorrow uh, on day number 293. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.